The Razer Blade 17 Pro seems like gamers answer to the MacBook Pro, but when good design meets next gen graphics, will this PC be able to handle it? Let's find out. Hi guys and welcome back to the Epic PC channel and today we're sitting down with the Razer Blade Pro 17 which is potentially one of the best designed laptops that I've ever seen from a gaming company. Now specifically in this unit it features an i7-10875H backed up with 32 gigs of RAM and that's pretty fast RAM at that. It's also got a 1TB M.2 SSD and it has an RTX 3080. Now we've reviewed a laptop last week, the GE76 with an RTX 3080 in it as well. However, that wasn't the Max Q edition, that was the Max P edition. Now we covered off the difference between the Max P and the Max Q editions in that video. So if you're interested, you can check out that video in the links in the description below. But the important thing to note about this specific machine is that the wattage of the RTX 3080 is 90 watts. Now, without further ado, let's get into the other features of this laptop. Now, the Razorblade 17 Pro, as the name suggests, has a 17-inch display, and it's a display without any compromise. It's a 4K 120Hz touchscreen display, and that's a lot of features for a laptop display to include. It's also beautifully finished and comes in at only a 6mm bezel, so the laptop is completely filling up the chassis in this situation. We tested the screen using some 4K footage as well as gameplay from Metro Exodus and Doom, and it ran super smooth on 120Hz and looks beautiful in gameplay, even running at low resolution like 2K or even full HD if you need to lower the graphics settings uh, to make up better FPS. The touchscreen is also a nice feature, although something I wouldn't personally use, but if you were say a graphic designer or someone who needed that type of feature, then it's a nice feature to have. The one thing I didn't like about the Razer display was the reflectiveness. Now this is unfortunately a compromise of having a touchscreen display because more often than not touchscreen displays are reflective. Uh, I'd probably trade the touchscreen just to have a non-reflective display because during gameplay uh, or watching a movie the reflectiveness would become annoying uh, seeing objects in my room or even myself in the reflection. So that's not really a good feature to have on a screen like this which is meant to create immersion for gaming. But again, if you were a designer, then this is a really nice feature to have. Now the standout feature for the Razer Blade Pro 17 for me is really the build quality. It's absolutely beautifully put together both internally and externally. Uh, on the external side, it is beautifully milled from a single piece of aluminium, which reminds me a lot of how a MacBook Pro is put together not in terms of the performance side, uh, but more on how it's manufactured. And I would dub this thing the black MacBook. At 19.9 millimeters thick, it's definitely a portable design and you could definitely put this in a laptop bag given that it's 17 inches. As I stated earlier, the machine has an extremely thin six meter millimeter bezel and built-in microphone and speakers. And the exhaust pipes run along the bottom of the screen. I see this as being an issue with heat, but from a design standpoint, it makes the machine have an extremely low profile design without the classic gaming look with huge ex exhaust pipes on the back of the machine. The back of the machine is also adorned by the classic Razer logo that lights up, but you can also control this using the Razer Synap software. So if you want, need a little bit more low profile design, you can completely switch this logo off. On the LED side, the machine is tastefully finished with LEDs on the logo and the keyboard, which were a lot brighter than some of the other models I tested, like the GE76. You can control this completely using the Razer Synapse software as well, and you can individually program each key. In games like Doom, it actually has a profile that loads up and has a custom scheme uh, for each game that uh, Razer supports. So for the Doom side, it turned the keyboard 
white and red, which was a really nice feature to have. On the right side, it features one USB, a Type-C, a HDMI, and an SD card reader. I love on a 19.9mm thick keyboard, they have included a HDMI cable, just in case you want to set this up as a desktop at home, uh, given some of the issues that the machine actually has. On the left side, it has an Ethernet, two USBs, a Type-C, a 3.5mm headphone jack. Unfortunately, Razer did opt for no IOs at the back, so it's not that simple to set this up as a machine at home, and you're likely gonna have cables running everywhere. But given the trade-off for design, I think that Razer has made the right call on this one. An interesting feature of the Razer Blade Pro 17 is the two fans embedded underneath the trackpad. During gameplay or general usage, it's pretty effective, and this is meant to cool the trackpad for usability. Unfortunately, this doesn't cool the rest of the metal chassis, which becomes almost unbearable during benchmarks and games such as Metro that really push this machine to its full potential. I would have to up for a completely external keyboard and mouse if I was planning to game with this machine as a home desktop setup. All in all, the trackpad is pretty good. It's very nicely textured and is perfect for use, use uh, during web browsing and watching videos. The keyboard on the other hand is a bit of a letdown. It's extremely low profile design did not result in a good typing experience and it didn't have much of a tactile response either. I was constantly making mistakes on it and even after a good few hours of gameplay, I didn't have a great experience with it and it took a very, very long time to get used to. Uh, another letdown of the keyboard is the heat which radiates through the keyboard as well, uh, not as badly as the palm rest, but enough to make a bit of a difference. The two speakers were decent at lower volumes, around 50 or 70%, but become a lot harsher when it gets up into the higher volumes. Uh, I expected uh, a lot better from an audio partner like THX, but at lower volumes, it did have some really good surround sounds. So that was a nice feature to include. You can expect to get two hours battery life out of the Razer Pro while doing things like browsing the web or you're watching YouTube videos. Uh, this goes down a little bit when playing games and other things and that goes down to about one hour. The battery is supported by a 70.5 watt hour rate lithium battery, which is smaller than something like the 99.9 .9 watt hour rate battery in the GE76, but the wattage of the Razer is dark backed. So you can experience similar battery life on a much smaller form factor. The 70.5 watt hour lithium battery is supported by a slim lightweight 230 watt power adapter. The cable is made using Razer's fiber material uh, which hold its shape well under tension. The only issue I have with using fiber material is no doubt this will fray and fuzz over time and given that it's a proprietary connector that you plug directly into this laptop, you're going to have to rely directly on Razer to provide you with a new one. This will no doubt be way more expensive than buying an aftermarket cable. The build quality doesn't just stop at the externals of the Razer Blade 17. The internal components are probably some of the best I have ever seen. Razer put loads of thought into how their PC would work best thermally and have placed thermal conductors throughout. Both internal RAM slots are taken up by two DIMMs of 16GB of RAM, so unfortunately no room for expansion unless you're planning on getting this machine pre-configured with 64 gigs of RAM. They do offer an additional M.2 slot for expansion, um, and this is great that most companies have started doing this. A huge portion of the machine is also taken up by the Razer Blade Vapor Chamber, which supports the GPU and CPU's cooling. It's an absolute work of art, and there's no copper pipes throughout, which is very different from the traditional approach that gaming laptop laptops take. 
The Chamber did do a great job of holding the Thermals down during intense gameplay and benchmarking, but again, the heat seemed to disperse throughout the chassis rather than the vents found underneath the screen, and this caused the palm rest to become unbearably hot and hard to touch during gameplay. On the performance side, before we get into gameplay and testing out games, one interesting thing about the Razer Blade Pro that I noticed is the time that it takes to boot up. I personally tested this machine and it, it resulted in a boot up time of 22 seconds. I then went down to my test rig and tested out the M.2 performance on that and that only took 15 seconds to boot into Windows. So it's interesting that this machine took 7 seconds extra to boot up. Razer has done some interesting stuff with the BIOS and you can see that with the custom logo that appears uh, when you boot this machine up, but it's uh, not the fastest boot up time in the world. So now on to gameplay. All of these tests were conducted using Synapse software at absolutely maxed out settings and we also manually set the fans to maximum speed. We also double tested to ensure that NVIDIA Shadow Play didn't interfere with the results. So the results you're seeing on the screen and the results we're showing in the graphs are going to be a little bit different. For Doom, the average FPS was 106.6 at absolutely max settings at 4K, which is amazing for a 20mm thick laptop. Although it didn't hit the 120Hz of the refresh rate of the monitor, the gameplay was amazingly smooth and enjoyable, with very little to no stuttering. For MOBA fans, the average FPS of League of Legends was 213 FPS, which is a pretty expected result. Where the PC really got maxed out was Metro Exodus, and again, it's expected because this is a newer game. At 4K, the game averaged 46.3 FPS, with huge dips in FPS during action. With ray tracing on, this was even lower. Obviously, Metro Exodus was always going to be a challenge for, Met for Metro at 4K, um, but I hope to have a smoother experience without ray tracing. The good thing about this display is that you can reduce the resolution and it looks absolutely fantastic. Dialing Metro down to 2K or even HD gave a much better experience with both giving a playable ray tracing experience. On the benchmarking side, again, the Razer was absolutely maxed out using the Synapse software and the fans were manually adjusted to the maximum RPM. On Firestrike Ultra, the laptop scored 6,424, but without Shadow Play, it scored 6,712. Without the charger in, the score absolutely plummeted to 1,348, but this was expected as the machine did not use discrete graphics cards in order to save power. The thermals were pretty good on the GPU side, although they were pretty high on the CPU cores. This gave us some headroom to do some overclocking with plus 200 to the core and plus 500 to the memory. Above this range, the PC had a few stability issues and we experienced a few crashes. The score for the razor blade with overclocking was 7,102 for Firestrike Ultra. We also had the GE76 from MSI last week to give a bit of a better comparison to uh, the mobile chips. However, the GE76 had the Max P version of the RTX 3080. The GE76 scored 8,061 on Firestrike Ultra. So in terms of performance, the Pro and the GE76 are pretty comparable, although the Pro is a lot uh, more modestly sized, with only a 16% performance jump between the two. Honestly, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the Razer Blade Pro 17. Whenever I pick it up, I'm absolutely blown away by the level of detail that Razer has put into it. From the full metal chassis made out of a sol solid metal piece, to the green tongues on the USB ports, to the back of the PC, which uses an amazing light-up green Razer logo. The problem I have with the Razer Blade Pro 17 is that whenever I launch a game, I go between enjoying myself to worrying about burning my palms. The Razer Blade Pro suffers from issues where the entire chassis acts as a radiator for the internals of the machine, and the result is a huge trade-off on usability. 
This could easily be solved by using an external mouse or a external keyboard, but this is a gaming laptop and it's a thin gaming laptop at that. So if you can't take it around and game with it, what's really the point of it? I'm really hoping that its younger brother, the Razer Blade Pro 15, with its dialed back 3070, will have a lot better performance on the thermals and solve the problems that I'm having with the Razer Blade 17. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a perfect companion PC that's great for daily usage, but can also double as an amazing gaming PC if you need it to be, then the Razer Blade 17 shouldn't be ignored and should probably be on your shortlist. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the content, then feel free to subscribe and like the video. We're also gonna be doing a giveaway of the Razer Basilisk X Hyperspeed. So if you're interested in that giveaway, check the links in the description. As always, if you're interested in our content, check out our website for more in-depth reviews.